You've probably heard that Einstein got the Nobel Prize not for relativity, but for the photoelectric effect. But here's something that might surprise you. Even though it was the 1921 prize, he didn't actually receive it in 1921. Why not? And when did he get it? Despite getting strong nominations from Max Planck, Einstein could not get his Nobel Prize for general relativity, his most important work. This was largely due to extremely critical remarks from other members of the Nobel Committee. The situation was further complicated by Einstein's unclear nationality. Due to the growing anti-Semitism, he had previously denounced his German citizenship and was not even in Europe in 1921 to receive his Nobel Prize. Established by Alfred Nobel, inventor of dynamite, the Nobel Prize honors those who have conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. First awarded in 1901, the prize includes a gold medal, a cash award of approximately $1 million, and enormous prestige. The Nobel Prize is arguably the most prestigious international award. The Nobel Prize for Physics is usually announced in October. The preparation starts a year before that. For the 2025 Nobel Prize, the first step was taken in September 2024. At that time, the Nobel Committee sent letters and messages to luminaries, asking for their suggestions for the following year's prize. The deadline for submitting suggestions is the end of January of the year of the award. A few months go by while the committee deliberates and consults with experts outside the committee. In June or July, the committee prepares a report. It includes the names of the persons considered for the prize and a recommendation for the recipient. This report is submitted to the Royal Swedish Academy. The Academy makes the final decision. The would-be recipient is announced in October and the prize is awarded in a ceremony at the Royal Swedish Academy held on the 10th of December. Some of Einstein's phenomenal work appeared in 1905. That year, in fact, is often called the Annum Mirabilis, or the miracle year for Einstein. He submitted at least five papers in that year, all of which have become classics. Most of the papers were written in his apartment on the first floor, located in Bern, Switzerland. And wonder of wonders, he did all the work at a time when he did not have an academic position. He applied for quite a few positions earlier and was denied. Then in 1902, he accepted a job as a technical expert at the patent office in Bern. During the Arnhem Mirabilis, he was still working there. Einstein's 1905 work was not immediately recognized by the scientific community. Even in 1907, when he applied for a position at the University of Bern, his application was rejected. He did not get an academic position until 1908 and did not attend an academic conference until 1909. The position he obtained in 1908 was not a permanent one. His first permanent position was at the University of Prague, where he moved in 1911. Then, in 1912, he was offered a professorship at Zurich, which he accepted, and moved back to Switzerland. Soon after, he was approached by people from Berlin with the idea of membership in the Prussian Academy of Sciences. He accepted the position in December 1913 and moved to Berlin on the 6th of April 1914. During all these turbulent years, Einstein's name started appearing in the Nobel nominations. The first person to nominate Einstein for a Nobel Prize was Wilhelm Ostwald in 1910 for his work on special relativity. Ironically, Ostwald had rejected Einstein's application to join his research group nearly a decade earlier, in 1901. By 1912 and 1913, Ostwald was no longer alone. Several others, including some Nobel laureates, had also nominated Einstein for the same reason, his groundbreaking theory of special relativity. Although there was some experimental confirmation of Einstein's famous mass-energy relation, it was argued that the evidence was not compelling enough to merit a prize. But by then, Einstein had published his general theory of relativity, and the tables had turned. Einstein had become a household name. This is not an exaggeration. Indeed, his fame spread outside the circle of physicists, even to lay people. The turning point came in 1919, when Arthur Eddington's famous expedition confirmed that starlight bends around the sun, just as general relativity predicted. Unsurprisingly, Einstein was nominated again in 1920 for general relativity. Now let's jump cut to 1921. 
the year Einstein apparently won the Nobel Prize. That year, Max Planck strongly nominated Einstein for his general theory of relativity, while another Swedish physicist, Carl Lossin, nominated him for the photoelectric effect. As a full professor of a Swedish university, Osin also had the right to nominate Nobel Prize winners. In response, the Nobel Committee assigned two of its members to review the nominations, Olvar Gullstrand for relativity and Svante Arrhenius for the photoelectric effect. Gullstrand, an ophthalmology professor, was highly critical of relativity and claimed that the effects of relativity would be unmeasurable, so small that in general they lie below the limits of experimental error. Arrhenius, on the other hand, argued that awarding another Nobel for quantum theory so soon after Planck's 1918 win would be premature. As a result, by the end of 1921, the committee concluded that no candidate was sufficiently suitable for that year's prize. In 1922, Einstein's name was proposed again. Meanwhile, the campaign for him had increased in strength. Maurice Brillouin wrote, Imagine for a moment what the general opinion will be 50 years from now if the name Einstein does not appear on the list of Nobel laureates. Ossin repeated his nomination for the photoelectric effect. Planck proposed to give the overdue 1921 prize to Einstein and the 1922 prize to Niels Bohr. Once again, Gullstrand reviewed Einstein's relativity work and repeated his previous criticisms. Ossin was asked as well to produce a report on the photoelectric effect, and he gave an excellent account of Einstein's revolutionary contribution to its theory. The committee adopted Planck's proposal. Einstein would receive the 1921 prize and Bohr the 1922 one. The Swedish Academy upheld the decision. Accordingly, a telegram was delivered to Einstein's address in Berlin on the 10th of November 1922, informing him of the good news. You might think that the rest of the story is obvious. Einstein went to Stockholm in December 1922 to receive the 1921 Nobel Prize, but that's not what happened. When the Nobel telegram arrived, Einstein wasn't even home. He and his wife, Elsa, were en route to Japan by ship, and he wouldn't return until March 1923. So obviously, he did not go to Stockholm to receive the prize that December. It's unlikely Einstein saw this as a missed opportunity. He was quite convinced that he would receive the Nobel Prize at some point. In fact, when he divorced his first wife, Mileva Maric, in January 1919, he promised to give her the entire Nobel Prize money whenever he received it. So, clearly, the news of the Nobel Prize did not come as a surprise to Einstein. It was clear much before December that Einstein would not be around to accept his prize. The question then arose, who would receive it on his behalf? Usually, when a recipient is absent for some reason, the person who represents him or her at the ceremony is the ambassador of the recipient's native country to Sweden, residing in Stockholm. So now a battle of sorts ensued, the bone of contention being, what was Einstein's native country? Born in Ulm, Germany in 1879, Einstein was originally a German citizen, but in 1896, he renounced it by paying a three-mark fee, becoming stateless for five years before gaining Swiss citizenship in 1901. At the time of the Nobel announcement, he was traveling on a Swiss passport, so naturally, the Swiss ambassador seemed the right choice to accept the award. However, this is not the story without a twist. In 1922, Einstein was in Berlin, a member of the Prussian Academy of Sciences. That position was available only to German citizens. The matter did not end there. The German Ministry of Science asked the Berlin Academy to clear up the citizenship issue. The Academy sent its report on the 23rd of January, 1923. They said that, since the job at the Academy required a German citizenship, and Einstein had accepted the job, it could be concluded that he was a German. Remember that Einstein was away in Japan when all these things were going on. When he returned in March 1923, he was asked to give his view on the matter. His letter, dated 24th March 1923, contained the following lines. When my appointment to the Academy was being considered, my colleague Haber informed me that my appointment would result in my becoming a Prussian citizen. As I attached importance to retaining my nationality, I made acceptance of a possible appointment dependent on this, a stipulation which was agreed to. So eventually, German ambassador Nadolny received the prize and also invited the Swiss ambassador to the ceremony and the banquet afterwards. The prize itself was later presented to Einstein in Berlin by the Swedish ambassador to Germany, 
Baron Rammel. In summary, while the official Nobel ceremony took place in 1922, Einstein didn't physically receive the award until 1923. So, what happened to the Nobel Prize money? As mentioned earlier, Einstein had promised his first wife, Mileva Maric, their divorce in January 1919, that she would receive the entire sum if he ever won the Nobel Prize. True to his word, when the money finally came through in 1923, Einstein transferred the full amount to Mileva's bank account. She used it to buy a house in Zurich. Remarkably, Einstein never kept a single penny for himself. Was Einstein hurt for no mention of relativity then or ever again in the circle of Nobel awards? Probably he did not care. The fame came to him anyway, even if the money slipped through his hands. As for the prize itself, or awards in general, it's likely he didn't place much importance on them. 